and welcome to a Word for This Day podcast. I'm Jory Schaefer, the show's host and creator, and it is my joy and my pleasure to welcome you today. Welcome to anyone who's found us for the first time. I'm so glad that you are here. Please don't run off quite yet. Stick around to, with us and see what the Lord has for us today. You know, God just keeps allowing this podcast to go all over the place. Um, at the On the date of this recording, just this morning as I'm recording uh, today, not this particular podcast, but the one that is released on the day that I'm recording this, God has allowed this to be downloaded in six countries, in, in Singapore, India, Mongolia, France, and Russia, and it's just not even seven o'clock in the morning, and that um, is in addition to the United States, but I give him all the praise and the glory for that, um, that he just puts this where he sees fit, and I would ask you to join me in praying that um His word accomplishes that purpose for which he sends it and that it doesn't return void and that it will be an encouragement to those who listen and that they will uh, want to know more of him. I pray that for all of you, friends, even though I don't know who you are. And welcome back to you regular listeners. I am so thankful for you. Thank you for coming along this journey with me. Thank you for sending me encouragement every now and then. Kaylee, thank you for your encouragement. Uh, I just appreciate you so much, and I appreciate all those who reach out, and um, and uh, you just don't know what that means, and God sends it just when uh, I need it, and so I'm so thankful for all of you. As I mentioned, I continue to pray for you daily. Um, I encourage you to share this podcast with friends, family, neighbors, strangers, just anyone who you think may receive a blessing from it, and know that I love to hear from you. So if you feel so lit, send me a message sometime. Um, And let me know what the Lord's doing in your life as you're spending more time with Him. I want to remind you that I'm doing some little short-form videos on social media uh, that show uh, how I journal a little bit about each verse for the day in a Bible journal. Um, I've done this. This is now the fourth year, and it's just been a real blessing um, in my daily discipline for me to see how living and active God's Word is. It helps me to focus. Focus my mind on him first thing in the morning. Um, I pray through what I'm reading, and it doesn't have to be anything long, but just starting out your day with that statement of worship and praise and acknowledging the truth that is in God's Word, it can make such a difference in your day. And, you know, if you've listened and thought, oh, I can't start that now because here we are at the end of January, it doesn't matter what day you start it, just jump in. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. You don't have to have the colored pens and the colored highlights lighters like I do. I've gathered those over time. I've gathered my way over time. It can be one pen, one highlighter, one little $3 or $1 uh, journal from the dollar store. Uh, But the most important thing is to focus your mind on him. And I heard a pastor say, and I've told you this before, that sometimes the attitude of our body helps focus our heart. And so as you are writing and thinking and listening and thinking and reading and thinking, all those things together help us focus our hearts and minds on him even more. And so I just want to encourage you in that. Well, our verse for the day for January the 28th, 2000. 24 comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, Romans chapter 1, verse 28, and it reads as follows from the English Standard Version. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. Oh, friends, this is one of the um, saddest sections of Scripture. It is truth. But it talks about, uh, and we're going to talk about it today, how after a time of rejecting God, and and no one knows how much time that is for each person, uh, but after a time of rejecting God and turning away and turning away and turning away, there comes a point where he says, all right, I'm giving you over to uh, to that untruth that you're believing. And, oh, friends, that's so sad. So, um God, though, is faithful. He's sovereign. His will and his ways are perfect. He knows every heart, and he is a loving, just, good, 
holy God, and he does love us, and he did make a way for everyone to know the truth. It's just that some choose not to know that. So we're going to uh, park here today, and I'm excited to see what we can learn. I pray it'll be an encouragement for us to continue sharing the goodness of God and his truth that is found in his word. Uh, But we are in this letter to the Romans. We were here earlier in the month, about 10 days ago. Um, We will spend, Lord willing, a lot of time in Paul's letters because he wrote 13 of the 27 letters that we find in the New Testament. You'll remember that the New Testament begins with the four Gospels, which tell us the good news of Jesus' earthly ministry, his time on here on earth, and then it moves to the book of Acts, which is the... Um, New Testament church history, early church history. And then we move into Paul's letters. And as I mentioned, there's 13 of those. Then we go into the general letters. There's eight of those written by men who are not Paul. And then the last book of the New Testament is New Testament prophecy, the the uh, book of Revelation. And so it's very, uh, it's helpful for me to think about those divisions and it makes it not seem quite so overwhelming. So I think that, I hope that's helpful for you as well. But I, of course, you know, I love all the words and all the verses, but I get so excited when we're back in Paul's letters to the Romans uh, because, not his letters, his letter, uh, because there is just so much here. Um, What we see is we could tell that Paul wrote this letter because at the beginning of the letter, he says, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus called to be an apostle set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through the, his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son, who was descended from David. And we talked about that when we were in Matthew a few days ago about that genealogy. And I just love that. According to the flesh and was declared to be the son of God in power, according to the spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ, our Lord through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the nations, including you who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all those in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is one of the longest openings that we see in Paul's 13 letters, one of the longest greetings. But, buddy, he lays out the gospel there. He tells us how he knows who Jesus is and um, goes all the way through what Jesus has done for us. And I'm so thankful. This letter to the Romans is uh, just jam-packed with just foundational doctrine that a believer needs to know. And we see that Paul tells us at the beginning, he gives us his credentials and says he's a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle. An apostle is one who is appointed to be a messenger. And he was not one of those original 12 apostles that walked with Jesus. Paul didn't meet Jesus until after Jesus had been resurrected. And while Paul was in the middle of persecuting Christians, But God had grace and mercy on Paul. And Paul tells us in his other letters that, uh, you know, it it had been determined beforehand, before the foundations of the earth, that Paul would do this. And um, I'm just so thankful for that example that we see. Um, Because unlike what we're going to see that happens to people who just continue to reject if if you turn when the Lord calls you and draws you to him, oh, he can do so much and will do so much with your life. It's that continual refusal and rebellion that causes to be that causes people to uh, lose that opportunity to know him. And uh, Paul, thankfully, though, even though he was a staunch Uh, adversary of Christians in the beginning because he truly thought that they were doing things that were against God's law. Um, But when he was able to see how Jesus did fulfill all the law of the prophets, and he was this one true uh, living Messiah, the one that had come, the one that had been sent by God, he uh, was obedient and he turned from his uh, blasphemy and turned from persecuting Christians and followed Jesus and God wholeheartedly. And I'm so thankful that he did that. 
Paul had intended to go to Rome and meet with the believers there, but we read that he says, and I believe it's in verse 13 of chapter 1, that um, he was prevented. So it wasn't God's will for him to go when Paul wanted to go. Um, And because he couldn't go when he wanted to go, the Holy Spirit inspired him to write this letter to the Romans. And I'm so thankful that he did because he laid out in just very, a very orderly a fashion and just wonderful apologetics about who how we know uh, Jesus is who he uh, is, how we know that he's the son of God, what he did in that saving work on the cross for us. He talks about grace and mercy and about life in the Holy Spirit. And I am just, I just love it when we're here. Now, if this is one of your first times listening or you haven't heard the story of the Apostle Paul's conversion, um, you can go back and read in, um, it, it's listed in three places. It's outlined in three places in the book of Acts, that book of early church history in Acts 9, Acts 22, and Acts 26. And I would encourage you to remind yourself of that if you haven't read it in a while. But it talks about how Paul was on his way to persecute Christians. He was also known as Saul then. Um, and the Lord Jesus met him on the Damascus road and said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And um, then Jesus gave him his commission, told him what he was going to do. He was blinded. He was taken uh, into Damascus where God had sent a man named Ananias to come to him and talk to him and, and tell him that what he was going to do. He received his sight again. From there, he went away to Arabia for about three years, and then he came back and started on his missionary journeys. And so many of the letters that we read of Paul's are letters back to the places uh, where he had ministered. Uh, But this letter, uh, this one to the Romans, as I mentioned, he had wanted to go meet with the believers there, but hadn't yet. And so I just love it. And Paul lays out in the very beginning here our need for a a savior and why we need a savior. And I'm going to start in verse 16 and read forward from there because Paul tells us about this gospel, this good news of why, of Jesus is coming to the earth and why there needed to, why there was a need for a savior. Um, And he talks about God's holiness. And so we're going to read that leading up to our verse for the day. And let me say right before this verse 16, Paul uh, had just said he was eager to come and preach the gospel to those who were in Rome. And um, then he goes into this. He says, for I am not ashamed. He's, He's like, I'm eager to come because I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith, that is, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. That righteousness of God is a key thing, as we'll see in these next verses, because in verse 18 he says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. And we've talked about this over and over again. Um, And it says, so they are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. And just before we move on, uh, Paul is given a very clear indication here. You know, everyone has been given the opportunity to be able to discern that there is a God based on creation and the things that he's made. We can uh, ascertain that there are there is a... Um, an intelligent creator, um, a holy creator. Um, And that's because we can tell that through the things that have been made. And then there are those who just refuse that truth. 
And then in 24, it says, Therefore God gave them up to the lust of their hearts, to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. And just before I move on, that is so important for us to realize that, oh, this this section is just jam packed with stuff. I'd like to stop on every verse and just park there. But this is all leading up to our verse for the day. It's just so important for us to think about these things. Um, but we see this in our world, how uh, people who refuse to uh, believe, refuse to see uh, through God's creation and what he's done, refuse to hear. Um, they they exchange the truth of God for a lie and they worship the created instead of the creator. And don't we see that with all the false religions? Um, they worship the things that are created and not the creator. And then in verse 26, for this reason, because these people have turned away, because they exchanged the truth of God for a lie, because they didn't pay attention to the things that he put for all of us to be able to steal, that uh, there is a holy God. Um, it says, for this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions for their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another, men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. And then in verse 28, this is our verse for the day. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what not ought to be done. And do you see that progression of thought? The righteous, are, the righteous holy God cannot continue to allow sin to be in his presence. And his wrath is coming against sin. All of us are sinners. So without a Savior, we didn't have a chance. We don't have a chance without a Savior. But God loved us so much that he sent Jesus to pay that penalty that we owe, to take that wrath from the Holy God on himself because... Um, we read that without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness. There's no remission of sins. And God loved us so much and Jesus loved us so much that he took that wrath. He was sinless. He took that wrath so that we didn't have to. But we have to believe. We have to accept that. We have to turn away. Um, but Paul's point here is that there's a point when people exchange that truth of God for a lie, when they turn away, when they worship the created and not the creator, when they completely ignore all the proof that God has given. Um, and they don't acknowledge him as holy and as the one true living God. At some point, he turns them over to that debased mind to do what not ought to be done. And Paul goes on to describe those things that oughtn't to be done. He says in verse 29, they're filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. They're full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness. They are gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless, Though they know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. Oh, friends, we see this in our culture. Those who refuse to acknowledge God, he gives them over to this debased mind and they do all these evil, unholy, unrighteous things. They are faithless. And um, it is just so sad because it doesn't have to be that way. God made a way for us to come to him through his son, Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We can't earn it. We can't do enough good to uh, earn salvation. It's by grace that you've been saved through faith. It's not of your own doing. It is the gift of God. Just have to receive it. Uh, but those who think that they are 
those who are going to walk in worldly wisdom in their own wisdom uh, refuse to see that. And that's when God gives them over to this debased or depraved mind. And when I mention this is one of the saddest part of Scripture, this one and then that part in the Gospels where Jesus uh, says, Depart from me, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. Uh, for those who think they are right, they're walking in their own worldly wisdom. But may we turn to him. May we seek him and his righteousness. May we um, thank him that he made a way for us to come to him and to be made right with him. And then may we encourage others in that. May we read his word, study his word, live it out and share it. And may he receive all the glory. Blessings to you, friends. Until next time.